What does a love of God's truth look like in the relationship? Yes, well, I, I feel, again, if I just have some general comments about it and then we talk about some specifics that we've written mm -hmm. down. But mm -hmm. again, um, we need to see the importance of God's truth in the relationship. And, and a person who doesn't believe in God, well, you could say, what is the importance of pure truth? You know, the real absolute truth in the relationship. Now, the importance of truth cannot be underestimated, in my opinion. It is of supreme value in any relationship. Without truth, no trust can develop. There can be no real love. There can be no faith that in certain circumstances and situations, love will be present without truth being present. Mm -hmm. And there can be no trust of the other party in the relationship if the other party is, has been shown to be in the past untruthful. So it is a huge part of developing trust and honour and love in the relationship. And without truth, a trusting, honest, open relationship cannot exist. Now, let's examine it from God's truth perspective, not just from truth. Mm -hmm. From God's truth perspective, God is the being of the universe that has all truth. So God's truth is highly important inside of the relationship because it is quite frequent inside of the relationship that our personal ideas of what are true are wrong. Mm -hmm. And at some point, one or both of us is going to have to accept that. And if both of us can accept that right at the beginning, that we both do not understand pure truth, that we are not purely and openly truthful with each other about everything, and we have to use that as the guideline of having a decent relationship. And if we go one step further, if we have a relationship with God, that our goal is actually to learn what God's truth is and practice it in the relationship, then we have the ability to have a very successful relationship. We also need to point out at this introductory phase that a soulmate relationship is not possible at all without truth without God's truth, actually. So there are many soulmates in the spirit world that have a relationship, but they don't have a complete soul union-based relationship because they're in the sixth fear and they're still blocking all of the truth that can come from God. Only those people who reach a soul union condition, which is the joining of both halves of the soul, mm -hmm. are those people who have accepted the truth, the universal truth or God's truth about all the issues associated with their relationship in particular and also about many other truths of the universe so so unless there is a dedication on the part of both parties in a relationship towards truth sooner or later the relationship is going to come under strain yeah yep and so that's what we need to say at the outset yeah. now let's look at some of what that looks like inside of a relationship. What does it look like if I'm focused on God's truth in yes. a relationship? So if we both love God's truth in the relationship and we're both seeking God's truth, we don't arrogantly believe that we already know what God's truth is before we work on the issues. Yes. So, so in other words, we don't just assume that uh, we are God, because <laughs> really, if you believe you know all of God's truth, then really you believe you're God. Now, there are religions and New Age philosophies that say you are, which are very harmful to relationships, actually, because they basically teach you that you are God and therefore you are, you know, you do know everything. You just have to be conscious of it or whatever their explanation of it is. Yeah. The reality is you're not God. You never will be God. So therefore you will never know all of God's truth. However, God has the capacity to give you all of God's truth or as much of God's truth as you desire to absorb. And if both parties in a relationship desire to absorb it, then you have a hope of actually seeing your own flaws and your own inadequacies and your own untruthful behavior and changing it. Mm -hmm. But without that, you can't see these inadequacies in the relationship and so the relationship will not grow. Yeah. yeah. Truth is essential for the growth of the relationship. Well, it I feel it binds people together in relationships. Yes. The, the, a combined desire for and honour of truth is the only thing that it, brings people together. It also brings trust. It, 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 the beauty of truth is that when I know that you're 100% truthful with me and you know that I'm 100% truthful with you, 
you know you can trust the person. You know whatever they're thinking, whatever they're feeling, that you will eventually know it even if you don't ask because the other person's honest about it. You will know that you can trust what they're, what they're doing. You know that when they say, no, they haven't slept with Mrs. Jones down the street, that they haven't slept with Mrs. Jones down the street and you can bank your life on it, right? But, but a person who hasn't got that kind of truth in a relationship obviously has no trust in the relationship either. Yeah, yeah, hmm? yeah. Okay. Um, another aspect, if we love God's truth in the relationship, both of us focus on always discovering what God's truth is about an issue rather than holding on to our own personal truth yeah. or attempting to compromise by having two different versions of personal truth. Yes. Now, I see this happening so many times in relationships. What they do is they say to each other or and to themselves, none of us really know what the truth is. So what we're going to do is I'll have my truth and you can have your truth and we'll just make some compromises wherever those two things disagree, right? Now, that is not ever going to be a relationship which is actually a very strong relationship in the long run. There is this concept, the world concept of relationship is the more you compromise in the relationship, the better the relationship becomes. That's the world view. And God's view is no compromise should ever be necessary in a relationship. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Most people believe that no relationship is possible unless compromise is Correct. Yeah. And it's very sad, isn't it? I find that basically the global feeling about truth is that you can never find an absolute truth, yes. like the global injury. And they might not say that about God even, but within their personal relationships, that's what they believe. Yes. And which indicates there's some some inconsistencies in their personal belief system. Correct. Uh, and also that as a result, they believe that compromise has to happen for there to be any kind of harmony. Yes. Yeah. And if you go along to a marriage counsellor, for example, on the planet, most marriage counsellors would definitely advise compromise in mm -hmm. the relationship. And what I'm saying here is that actually no compromise is necessary in the relationship or to say it more clearly, no compromise with each other is necessary in the relationship. But both of you will have to compromise when it comes to God's truth because God's truth is true and both of you will need to change in order to accept it. Yeah, yeah. We're... <laughs> I don't want to make this about me, but I just Go think on. about uh, examples within our relationship where, you know, often when a couple is moving towards God's truth together, it's just as you said, where there's a compromise and both, if they're sincerely seeking, have to seek in God's truth. They both have to face some personal pain or frustration or fear in order to move forward. Mm. But very often in the beginning of our relationship, especially, it, you would be pointing out, pointing out a truth and I would sit with it and reason about it and realize it's true. And because you'd already accepted the truth, it was smooth sailing for you. But for me, <laughs> It was exactly. weeks of confrontation. Yes. Yeah. And this is what a person would need to understand too, that if they start accepting God's truth, there are at times going to be weeks or even months of internal conflict going on yeah. that they'll need to work through emotionally in order to accept God's truth. And this is why God's truth needs to be the benchmark of the relationship, not your personal truth. Your personal truth and your desire to hold on to it is a very flawed concept when it comes to having a decent relationship. If you think about it logically, if God does exist, then God would know how best for you to have a relationship, you know, what mm -hmm. the best things for you to do are to have a relationship. Now, my suggestion to any person who believes in God is that you must understand what God believes is a good relationship before you'll have one. <laughs> yeah. because you definitely won't have a good relationship before then. Mm -hmm. And that is going to require that both of you accept God's truth about relationships rather than holding on to your own ideas and concepts about what makes a good relationship. Yeah. Yeah, so that, and, and that requires both of you changing to have God's view. Mm -hmm. right? Now, if we take it from the point of view of absolute truth, so a person doesn't believe in God, 
then of course it's a bit more difficult. If a person uh, believes in the concept of absolute truth, then we're fine because mm -hmm. it, then, then both parties know, if both parties believe in that concept, that there is an absolute truth in this particular situation and whatever that absolute truth is, is what we both need to agree upon, right, yeah. at, at some point. Now, my and that absolute truth may be may be in disagreement with both of their individual personal truths mm -hmm. right but for them to know the difference is very difficult yeah and that's why it's very very difficult without god in a relationship to actually work through this issue of truth in a relationship and it's also why the majority of people without god in a relationship eventually hang on to the concept that each has their personal truth and they need to compromise yeah yep. yeah Okay, mm. um, so love of God's truth in a relationship, the third aspect we mentioned is that both partners honour truth over their own partner's personal emotional beliefs and injuries. So here we're talking, we've talked about letting go of personal opinions, if you like, in the last um, point. Yeah. But here we're talking about we're honouring truth over the injury of the other person, which yes. while it's very related to opinion and belief, there's, there's more to it, isn't there? Yes, well, the injury usually triggers a whole group of emotions, emotions such as fear and anger and other emotions like that that are difficult to address and deal with. And if we truly love truth, we will actually say the truth even if we or the other person gets angry or afraid or has some other emotional reaction to the truth. In other words, what we're saying here is the emotional reaction to the truth does not matter. And in fact, we allow the person, because of the first question we answered yes. about humility, we allow the person to have their emotional reaction to the truth, mm -hmm. but it does not stop us from saying the truth. Yeah. <laughs> and I see this, unfortunately, being a big problem for most relationships. It definitely does stop most people from saying the truth when they know their partner is going to get angry yeah. or they know their partner is going to, you know, be resentful or they know their partner is going to withdraw sex for four weeks if they say something. Yeah. You know, then, of course, they don't say anything. And, <laughs> and that is just an emotional response to the truth. And what we need to learn to do with each other and ourselves is to allow the emotional response to the truth, work through the emotional response to the truth by feeling it and addressing it, but don't allow the emotional response to the truth to help us avoid stating the truth. Yes. That's what we need to learn to do. One of my favorites is in a couple where, um, Somebody says, look, I can't tell my partner about the affair that I had because it'll hurt them. <laughs> and I say, when you had the affair, you hurt them. Correct. It's not the telling of them. Actually, telling them is, is a loving act because yes. it's, it's bringing truth into the relationship. It's allowing them to yes. make better decisions. And almost... Not only that, the, the statement itself is untruthful. Mm. The only reason why the person isn't saying the truth about their affair is because they're afraid of what will happen to them if they state the truth, not to their partner. Yes. Right, they're afraid their partner might leave them or they're afraid their partner might get angry or they're afraid their partner might shoot them or something. You know, some, you know they're afraid of the potential violence that might trigger or whatever. Yeah. And that's why they're avoiding saying the truth. Yeah. So in other words, they're afraid of their own emotional experience. So it's actually a more selfish motivation that causes them to not speak the truth. Yeah. They're worried about how they'll handle, personally handle, the response of their partner. Yeah, and a lot of us make excuses, don't we, that we're protecting our partner when really we're yes. being cowards. Yeah, about we're our... protecting ourselves. Yeah. Let's get honest about yeah. it. Yeah. And the person who's really truthful would know that. Yeah. They would know that the main reason why they withhold truth is because they want to protect themselves, so they're afraid. Yeah. And fear isn't a good reason, as I've said about any emotion. Fear, anger, sadness, whatever, is not a good reason to withhold the truth. Yeah. And we need to honour that in the relationship. Yeah. We don't withhold truth for any emotional reason. Whatever it is, whatever justification you have, none of those justifications are worth breaking this concept of holding on to truth in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay. Mm. 
A love of God's truth means that both of us stop living in codependent addictions and in our facades with each other. Yes. Now, we again see this occurring quite a lot. Now, let's look at a facade, for example. A facade is a false presentation of myself to another person. Mm -hmm. Now, if I love truth, I would not have it. So you see this in a lot of beginning relationships, you know, where they, they start off and both parties are completely in the facade with the other party. Yeah. And, and this is an indication that they haven't learnt this basic principle about relationship. And what they do is they establish a relationship based on facade and then slowly the facade gets pulled away and then eventually both of them say, you're not the person I started having a relationship with which is very true because both of you <laughs> <laughs> were, in a, were completely different people, yeah. right? Yeah. So, of course, uh, a facade, having a facade in a relationship is a primary cause of breakdown of relationships yeah. over time. This is why relationships often start out looking good yeah. and then finishing up a year later, two years later, or even three months later, looking terrible because now they're out of the facade and they're in their reality, their real emotions, their yeah. real state, their yeah. real truth. And in that place, you know, they don't get along at all. No. So, so you can see giving up facade is essential if you're ever going to have a good relationship. Yeah. And we'll talk about that in depth, won't we, in a, in a latter question. Yes, and also in the coming assistance groups yes. in 2016, we talk about, you know, the facade and the effect it has on relationships, including our relationship with God. Yeah. Very damaging to relationships, yeah. holding on to a facade. And you mentioned a relationship breaking down after a year or three months. So some people live in their facade for 20 years in their, in their marriages. Some it's do. harder to maintain. It's hard it? to maintain. Yeah. But and honestly, when they do, their soul condition starts influencing their bodies in such a way that there are problems that occur in their body as a result. So in the end, they have illnesses and diseases that they wouldn't normally have if they didn't have the facade mm -hmm. that come up as part of the tri tribulations of their relationship anyway. Yeah. So, if, for example, a woman trying to have sex when she's actually feeling like she doesn't really want to have sex and she has anger about it and she suppresses that anger and tries to please her husband by having sex with him, eventually she's going to have all sorts of genital issues or, you know, uh, what they call women's problems <laughs> in her body yeah. as a result of that particular emotion being, you know, being suppressed within her. She's far better off being honest and then she wouldn't have those particular problems. So, so yes, it's important to understand that even if you have a facade of 20 years or 10 years or whatever, how long you've maintained one, it does cause a degradation to the relationship in many ways through physical ailments and issues occurring. Mm. So uh, that's the first aspect. The second aspect of this particular statement is the aspect of addictions. Yeah. And basically these are codependencies. Well, I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine type of thing. I'll do this for you if, as long as you do that for me. Now, the problem with this is that as soon as one party stops doing what they're doing, then the other party will get resentful and also stop what they're doing. And immediately you have a breakdown in the relationship and no love. And in fact, it's not a love-based relationship in the first place. It's a bartering system. You've made an agreement. You might as well have sit, sat down and said, what we do for me? Yes, I agree to that. What will I have to do for you in return? Yes, I agree to that. And there's the basis of our relationship. Isn't that what they sign at the church? Are they? <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, but, but most people don't even, are not intelligent enough about it to even just create it like a document, you know, like a hundred page document which says, I'll do all these things for you as long as you do all these things for me. Now, of course, such a relationship is not based upon love. Yeah. It's based upon codependent addictions it, it, it is very, very damaging in the long term. And while those relationships often survive for the entire of the Earth's condition, mm -hmm. they break up in the spirit world almost immediately anyway. Yeah. Because after a while, people start realising that these addictions are harmful, that they cause sin. And sin, the effects of sin are things like degradation of the body, disease, sickness and other effects that are all the results of a person engaging in the sin of codependent addiction and it is a sin from God's perspective to engage in codependent addiction and we need to start seeing it as such. Right? Codependent addiction causes huge amounts of problems in relationships and is one of the main reasons why people revert to compromise and are hiding the truth from their partner. They begin engaging other relationships while they have relationships and so forth uh, to feed these codependent addictions and facades. Mm -hmm. 
and many relationships on this planet as a result are a complete facade. Mm -hmm. They are a complete facade. They are completely like uh, what you see is definitely not what you get. Mm. Yep. And sooner or later, both parties in the relationship generally become aware of that. Yeah. And so those kind of relationships are very dissatisfying. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, the last two you've already touched upon. Mm -hmm. And that These is are aspects of truth. As of what it looks like when we love God's truth in, in the, the relationship. relationship. Yep. And that is that we stop creating harmony, so-called harmony, with yep. each other for the sake of peace rather than creating real harmony by being truthful and honest. Correct. See, a lot of people want to lie because it gives the, the Im image of harmony, but it's not real harmony. The soul... The soul's in disharmony still. The feelings inside of the soul is in disharmony. So, for example, if I lie to you about a, an infidelity, then I've already created disharmony in the relationship. And if I lie about it, I, I, our, our relationship is not more harmonious. It's only the illusion of more harmonious. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm addicted to the illusion, I might do that. But if I'm addicted, if I really want to have truth in the relationship and really want to have closeness in the relationship, I'll have to declare what I did yeah. and even examine the reasons why if I want to repair the relationship. So a person who's really truthful in a relationship desires that. They desire to have a real relationship rather than a peaceful relationship. Mm -hmm. The irony is, is that if, if you are both humble and you're both loving, and you both have a desire for God's truth, there will also be peace in the relationship. Yeah. Right? But it won't be created through the illusion of harmony. It will be created through actual harmony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we live in denial of so many things, it might appear to be smooth on the surface, but there's always so much. If there's not um, other un like severe undercurrents going on, there's a deep level of dissatisfaction personally, isn't yes. there, in each in each person, in each individual. whether they acknowledge it or not. Correct. W because they're in denial, they often don't want to acknowledge it. No. But. And this is why relationships often degrade over time because the dissatisfaction level increases over time. Both parties don't want to be humble about it, don't want to face the truth about it. And as a result, they continue the harmony, so-called harmony, the illusion of harmony. They continue that illusion rather than being honest with themselves and having to work through the issues. Once you work through the issues, and that process may not be very peaceful if both one or both parties have a, an unloving tendency towards a lack of humility or a lack of truth or a lack of love, then it will certainly won't be peaceful. Mm -hmm. But in the end, peace will come about as a result of working through those issues in harmony with love, truth and humility. So I encourage everybody to give up the illusion of harmony and work through to having real peace in a relationship by embracing the principles of humility, truth and love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, final point that we already have touched on, which is that if we both love God's truth in the relationship, we stop compromising with each other and we stop slowly withdrawing from each other as a result of these continual compromises. Yes. I feel that before we raise the issue of compromise in the, in the aspect of humility mm -hmm. um, and earlier in this with, with the aspect of truth, yeah. but now what we want to do is look at the results of compromise. And the results of compromise in a relationship are that we eventually detune from one another. We know that they won't like this and the, we don't like that and we start having these compromising situations occurring where one of us or both of us are not happy with the other because of the compromises being engaged. And we become also very disappointed with the compromises generally. And, and unfortunately, if one party is compromising the aspect of truth, absolute truth, God's truth, then they'll become very disappointed very quickly. Yeah. And it creates this really, this disjointing and uh, dissolution, this gradual dissolution of the relationship. And, and what happens is we emotionally step away from each other under those circumstances. And this is why a soulmate relationship is not possible without truth. Because what happens is every time you, you withhold truth or you want your partner to withhold truth, 
you are actually stepping away emotionally from the relationship. Mm -hmm. As you step away emotionally, you cannot be emotionally close. And the more you step away emotionally, you cannot be sexually close. And you are leaving your relationship open to some third party coming into the relationship with who you feel more emotionally close to or more in harmony with, and that person then interfering with your relationship to such a point that the relationship completely breaks down. This is what you're doing by not telling the truth, not holding on to the truth as, a, as an important fact in your, as a necessary fact for those safety and trust that needs to develop in a relationship. I see that happening a lot in marriages where over time there's compromises happening. People end up suppressing really parts of their nature or their desires mm -hmm. because they know the other one's not going to approve and they really want the approval. So they, they just compromise, compromise. The, the sexual, the lack of sexual attraction starts happening and mm -hmm. that's another cause for dissatisfaction. And Correct. sometimes couples kind of try and compromise around that, which only leads to more kind of disconnection. Yes. Because if you compromise to have sex when you really don't want to, then you're detuning from the initial lack of desire and it compounds. Mm. You mentioned leaving the relationship open for, say, a third party to come in. But what I see commonly happening is that people just end up trying to fulfill some of the emotional needs, needs what they call their needs yeah like their desire for intimacy really yes with their friends of the same gender correct so so the guy share, goes off fishing with his mates and, and the, the girl girls goes share off all their you know the worries girls. and their insecurities and their thoughts and their dreams with their female friends yes and sometimes a, a, an affair might not happen in the relationship, but there's this huge yes. detunement between the two couples. So the, so the couple aren't couple. best friends. And the reality is that uh, a couple needs to be best friends if they're ever going to maintain sexual chemistry over long periods of time. Yeah. And, and sexual chemistry too is very much dependent upon truth. And the more you withdraw from truth, the more sexual chemistry will disappear. So this is something too that people need to realise is that it, it, initially when they start relationships, most people are looking for sexual, instant sexual chemistry. Yeah. This is a big flaw to look for instant sexual chemistry, not understanding that sexual chemistry develops with closeness and truth and emotional intimacy and any other kind of sexual chemistry is fully based on addiction and facade. Mm -hmm. So if you have instant sexual chemistry with a person, it's highly likely that you are in heavy addiction and facade with the person, which creates this instant sexual chemistry, which will disappear over time, not improve, mm -mm. if you don't learn the principles of love, truth and humility in the relationship. If you learn the principles of truth in the relationship, you might start off with hardly any sexual chemistry at all in the relationship. And then over time, as the truthfulness and the love and the humility grows in both parties, then the sexual chemistry also has the capacity to grow inside of the relationship. So, so I see a lot of people making that mistake, you know, thinking that sexual chemistry being the beginning of the relationship means that the relationship will last a long time. Mm -hmm. and, and if they follow the principles we're teaching here, often sexual chemistry at the beginning of a relationship will mean the relationship will break up over a period of time because the sexual chemistry was based on other things other than truth, love and humility. We know some couples, don't we, who are both people in the couple are striving for God's truth and for humility and to learn love from God. And um, some of them came together with strong sexual chemistry. And now they're going through this process of personal change and change in their relationship. There's hardly any, any sexual, sexual chemistry. chemistry. <laughs> yeah. Or that might have happened before they even met us, that there was a lack of sexual chemistry. Correct. There's a dissatisfaction in the relationship. And I often want to encourage them and say, like, just hang in there and keep going for this truth thing, for this humility thing, for this love thing, because... Yes. It, it'll come again, but especially if they're soulmates, it will come again, but in a much more fulfilling way. Well, that's probably the proviso we need to yeah. add, isn't it? Is that if a person develops humility, truth and love in their relationship and sexual chemistry does not grow, but rather wanes, then it's highly likely the couple isn't, aren't soulmates. Because with regard to soulmates, there is always a growing sexual chemistry over a period of time if they engage the principles of humility, love and truth. That's how God designed their relationship. Yeah.
but you just got to be careful that the first afternoon that you decide to be truthful and there's zero sexual chemistry, you go, <laughs> no, you oh, give that up. means yeah. we're not soulmates. It can take many years yeah. for a soulmate couple to develop sexual chemistry. And in fact, many soulmate couples that I meet have no sexual chemistry whatsoever, which is the reason initially why they're generally not in a relationship. And it takes many years before they even recognize that that person is actually their other half. Yeah. by developing these principles of truth, love and humility in themselves first. And then as they develop that, then obviously the relationship develops. Mm. Cool. So that was the issue of truth yes. in the relationship and how it looks, and particularly if we accept God's truth in a relationship. Again, we could comment that very few relationships on the planet do this. And as a result, most relationships on the planet really, really struggle, particularly after a period of time. Yeah. So initially, they may start out with that sexual chemistry and a special type of bond. But over time, that bond eventually disappears or dissipates because of them not maintaining truth in a relationship and compromising on issues of God's truth in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And in any relationship, it is truth that opens the the pathway for a bond. So even if a partnership turns out to not be soulmates, if they're truthful with each other, there's going to be more of a bond, a, a more of a love-based relationship anyway, isn't there? Correct. And if, if it turns out that they eventually uh, disband in terms of a relationship because they recognise they're not soulmates, it's highly unlikely if they've developed these qualities of love and truth and humility that they would be upset or resentful about mm -hmm. that breakup. Yeah. And certainly that breakup would not have any impact on the children under those circumstances, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about later in this in the partner relationship series. Yeah. We'll talk about how, you know, breakups should probably occur yeah. and also how breakups affect children and why. Yeah. Uh, because we, I think they are very important reasons why many people on the planet don't engage issues of truth, love and humility in their relationship because they're afraid of what will happen to their children yeah. if they do. And we would like to talk about those particular subjects in the future sessions. Yeah, very important ones that mm. we've got some good questions about. Yes, yeah. yes.